Okay. So y equals mx plus b. b is the y-intercept. It crosses the y, and the slope is m. Now, points of form, as you can see, which one is the slope? The m. I personally love the points of form because it will always give you a point and a slope. Now, in this particular case, which one's the point? H comma k. We have been using y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Is that still okay? For this particular case, which one is the point? x1 and? Y1. Yep. Okay. So I, oh, it just disconnected on me. So either form is perfectly fine. There's no difference. Sorry, it just disconnected on me, so let me just hook it back up. Technology. One eight zero five. Oh, tell me if I'm wrong. Let's try it again. One eight zero five seventeen. Okay, I'm a little bit dyslexic right there. Seventeen eight three six nine three seven. All right, and then the standard form is ax plus by equals c. On your quiz, though, a couple of you left abc with decimals and fractions. Is that ever okay? No. no, abc can never, ever, ever be decimals or fractions. They always have to be what? Whole numbers, right? Positive or negative whole number, except a. Would you guys agree? A must always be what? Positive only whole numbers. All right, here we go. Let's graph. Um, we're going to do one, two, three together, and then check for use means what? You are on your own. All right, y'all. Here we go. Number one. What form is number one? All right, point slope form. Do we have a slope already? Yes. What's the slope? Negative one over two. Negative one over two. Do we have a y-intercept? Yes. Y-intercept is at where? Six. six. Can I write it as an order pair? Yes. Zero comma six. six. All right. If you need to borrow a ruler, go get a ruler. You can take out your ID. Uh, you want to draw a nice straight line. All right, let's plot. Which one should I do first, the slope or the y-intercept? Yeah, y-intercept. Some of you already know this really well from Algebra 1. This is all review. So you can just go ahead without me. Just kind of look up to check answers, OK? We're going to plot the y-intercept for 0, 6. Make it fatter. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Make your points really fat so you can see. I normally do about three to four dots. I know two is only, only what you need to make a straight line, but three or four make it better. How about the negative one half? How, which way do you go? Down and right. Okay, you can go down and then right or up and left. I'll do both. I'm going to go down one. Right two, down one, right two. I will also go up one and left two, up one and left. The more points you do, the straighter is your line, which is better, more accuracy. Okay, there's your line. As you can see, um, examples one, two, three are in different formats. Okay, so that way you can kind of get a hold of, hey, which one is easier to use. Now, example two, I'm giving you, I don't have any grids on here, so make sure you make your own grids. Do we have a point and a slope on example two? Yeah. What's our slope? Two thirds. What's our point? Very carefully. Remember, the format for point slope form, wasn't it always x minus an x coordinate? Okay, how did this get to become a plus? The number over the name. Yeah, if it's already in the point of form, then you want to take its opposite. So instead of doing a 7 comma negative 5, you actually want to do what? Negative 7. You want to take the point as its opposite. You want to do negative 7 
comma, positive or negative 5? Positive, if you want to, okay. As you can see, I don't have any of the tick marks. You make your own tick marks and make it equal to one another, please. Okay, so I'm going to negative 7 in the x. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. And then just plot your point and then use your point and then use the slope. So negative 7, go up 5, and then here we go. Should I go up and right? Can I do that? Yeah, okay, so here we go. Go up 2, right 3. Up 2, that puts me at 7, and then right 3, so it's right there. 2 points, it's the minimum requirement for a straight line. I do have 2 points there. I'm just going to make a nice straight line with my ruler. Do we need arrows on the ends? Yes. yes, because they don't really stop, okay? These lines, they go on forever and ever and ever. What form is example three? Standard. The standard, right? Okay. In standard form, you have choices. Okay. You can solve for it being y equals mx plus b form. For me, when I see a standard form, the easiest way that I'm going to do is x intercept and y intercept. X intercept is when y is what? When y equals to zero. So what you're really doing is just solving for x. So 4x minus 3 times 0 equals negative 24. What's 3 times 0? It's 0. It's beautiful. So guys, any time that you're looking for an x on a set, the whole y term is completely what? Disappearing, gone. So all you have left is 4x equals negative 24. How do I solve for an x-intercept? Divide both sides by? 4. Okay, divide both sides by 4. So if you have that... Griffin, dear, can you tell me what x intercept is? <coughs> Very good. Okay, so that means when I go negative 6, make a dot 2, 4, 6. Can I also write x intercept as negative 6, comma 0? Is that still okay? Mm -hmm. Now, and then I'm going to do is, I'm going to find the y-intercept. Okay. Y-intercept, Megan B, where are you? Okay. Megan, y-intercept, x has to be what? Zero. Very good. Okay, so you can do the same thing. I believe your algebra 1 teacher probably said this back in the days. Back in the days, when you're looking for x and y-intercept, for example, on the x-intercept, could I just technically take my hand and cover up this term? Yeah. That's what's happening when the y is zero. This whole thing's gone. Same thing. Well, the y in a set, could I technically take my hand and cover up the what? The entire x term. That is absolutely true. Because if I do that, because four times zero is zero anyway, even though I'm writing everything down, uh, but technically, you could go, hmm, you know what? The x is gone because it four times zero. Minus three y equals negative 24. So this whole thing class is gone. How would you solve for y from here? Where's Nick A? Nick, help me. How do you solve it? Divide by some negative 3. Okay. Okay, perfect. y equals to positive a or, how would I write that as an ordered pair? Was Hannah A? Hannah A? Absent? Thank you. Isabella A? Where's Isabella A? Isabella A, how do I write that as an ordered pair? So order pairs, so tell me the x-coordinate first and then comma the y-coordinate. Uh, y, y in a set, the x is what? Always what? Zero. zero. So it's actually zero comma eight. Okay. So I'm going to go up eight. Do I have two dots, guys? Yep, make a straight line. 
Okay. So we have check for use next. I'm going to give you guys about three minutes to do the check for use. And then we'll come back together on those three, after the three minutes. Yeah, feel good to ask your friend, like, hey, I'm done. Are you done? Let's compare answers. Notes are not going to be any useful to you if it's wrong okay. or you don't know how to do it. Write everything down, especially if you're struggling with now. Write everything down, and then you can come and ask me a tutorial if you're shy. About like, hey, I didn't understand this. Can you re-explain that to me? One and, yeah, so in between the one and two, really. Yeah, so you want to do in between one and two. So that's an approximation. Um, is that number four? Yeah. Is that X and a Okay. So Joseph, the X and a step on number four is eight-fifths, you said? Eight-fifths? Eight-fifths, is that right? Yeah. So that's when you can just approximate. Eight-fifths is not quite two yet. You guys agree? But it's definitely more than one. So put a dot in between what, two integers? One and two. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You approximate it. Okay. Okay. So number four is standard form. Okay. Again, you can graph this out multiple ways. You can solve for y equals mx plus b, or you can use x and y in the set, or you can solve it back out to the point slope form. You have a question? Oh, yeah, you can do multiple ways. Okay. Yeah, so these are all three different ways that you get to choose. Okay. Yeah, you pick whatever way that's easiest for you. Got it. Okay. Okay, so the question is like, hey, number four, like, I can do this easier. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can you see that I'm showing you three different ways here above? Do you have to do a particular way? No, you pick a system that works best for you. Is that understood? Okay. All right. So for this one, some of you said, I want to solve for y. Is that OK as well? Sure. Some of you did x and y in a set. Okay. So this one goes to Joseph. Joseph, what system did, what method did you use to graph? Joseph, why? What method did you use to graph this question, number four? Uh, I'm not sure what the method is, but. What did you, tell me what you did then. Forget okay. it. Well, I divided um, the x and the y to get each point. For those slow. So, are you doing x in a set? Sure. <laughs> well, okay, let me ask you the question then. See our three methods above? One, two, three? 
Um, examples? Example one, example two, example three? It's the end of form, which is you're looking for the x and y set. Okay, so Joseph said I did the x and y set. So you found the x and the set first, right, Joseph? Which means y has always what? Zero. Good. So that means the y term is gone completely. Would you agree, Joseph? Yes. So divide both sides by 5. So x is exactly 1 and 3 over 5. True or false? True. True. So Joseph said, well, I don't have any tick marks. I'm going to go and make tick marks. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. So I'm going to plot a dot in between positive 1 and positive 2 integer. There's nothing wrong with estimation that at all. Then what did you write for y and set, Joseph? Um, what has to be 0 for the y and set? X. Mm -hmm. So x terms gone completely, right? So you have negative 2y equals 8. That means y has to be what, Joseph? Um, negative 4. Okay, y equals negative 4. I'm going to go down to negative 4, plot a dot. I have two dots, make a straight line. Now, if you solve for y, do you still have the same line? Yes or no? Yeah, doesn't matter. You're going to have the same exact line. Okay. Um, Haley C, can you tell us how you did this one? What did you do for um, check V5? Um, I used punctuation. Okay, so tell me what to write. No, it's negative one third. Uh huh. And then point is four and negative two. Double check. Is Haley correct on the point? The signs always have to be what? Opposite. Okay. So I don't have any tick marks. I'm gonna go make tick marks. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Okay, I'm going to plot. Haley, did you part, uh, plot the point first? Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to go 4, negative 2, make a dot. And then from there, which way did you go? Um, down 1 and left. Okay, down 1, 1, 2, 3. Okay, I'm going to do a couple of dots so that way my line's straight. Down 1, 1, 2, and 3. There you go. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Uh huh. Oh, you need you want down one, go right three, right, Haley? All right, so I'm gonna raise. Thank you. Good eye, guys. All right. See, I didn't even catch. All right, so down one, but I can go right three. Is that okay, guys? Okay, so that. Can I also go which direction? Up. Yeah, because I'm out of space. As you can see, I don't have any more space on the left corner. So I'm gonna go up one and then left three. One, two, three. Up one, one, two, three, so there you go. Thank you. Good eye, Ali. Perfect. So fix your line. It, it was going the wrong way the first time before. Then we're going to move to this one. We're still, this is still graphing linear function, except now I'm going to ask you a few more things. Okay? In your notes, go ahead and write these down. Let me make it a little bit fatter. There you go. So Joey S, break up chain. It's just a fancy thing for what? That's right. Domain. Can I get a little R? Domain is describing what? All of them, right? Okay, all of them. Jennifer W, the range is describing what? That's right, all of the y values. Very good. Mm -hmm. 
Bless you. And we just did X and Y in a set. Okay, X in a set is when you substitute zero for the for the which variable? Y variable. And Y in a set is when you substitute zero for the X variable. Okay. The only new part for you guys would be these intervals. And then once you guys are done copying, I'm just gonna explain that. That way you are you have a better understanding that you're not copying and writing at the same time. So make this nice. notation is something brand new to us, to our class. Okay, so I think most of you are done. So let me kind of pull it up so that way you can see when we use the interval notation. So here are the examples, one, two, three, and as you can see, these are very similar function to our, the ones we just got done graphing. We will refer back to the graph. Okay. So for these ones, point views, ray of chain, which is slope, domain and range, which I think you guys do know what the algebra one x in a set and y is 0, y in a set and x is 0. Now, here's the part. So it's increasing intervals. And the interval, we're going to, in a little bit, the interval is, hey, when, what's happening is, when I'm asking for increasing and decreasing, the x value, you always have to go towards the right. It doesn't matter increase or decrease. Is that understood so far? Okay. So as you're going to the right, okay, the increasing piece is this. Is the y going up every time? That's increasing. As you're going to the right, okay, as your pencil's moving to the right, is your Y going up? Is the Y increasing? Is the Y getting bigger? That's the increasing interval. Is that understood so far? Now, decreasing interval is the same thing. You're still going towards the right, okay? So, but the Y value, what's happening is you're going to the right. Your pencil's going to the right. The Y value is what? Going down, okay? So that's decreasing. So, but every time, are you moving to the right? Yeah. Okay. So increase and decrease is really describing the y value. Does that make sense? As uh huh. What if it doesn't matter? Then we call it constant. Okay. But lines right now, most lines are either increasing or decreasing. The only time you can have constant is when you have this y equals line. Because guess what? Is a y increasing or decreasing at all ever? No. And then this line. This line, is the y increasing, decreasing at all ever? No. So those are the only two places that you won't have any. Okay. So we are going to look at this. Point use. Okay. This, if you look back at the previous one that we just finished, do we already have point use? Mm -hmm. What's our point use? What point did we use? Zero, comma, six. Guys, I do take points off for not having parentheses on the point. The point is an ordered pair. It needs an open parentheses and it needs a closed parentheses. 
do we already know the rate of change? What's our rate of change? Negative 1 over 2. Look at that. All of that is that easy. Okay. Now, the domain. The domain is describing what? All of them. Okay, so look back at your line on example 1 up above. Do we have all positive x value at some point? Yeah, because of the arrow, right? Do we have all negative x value at some point? Yes. Because of the arrow. So what can we say about the domain? All real numbers. All real numbers. You're right. It's going to be all real numbers. Okay. Now, all real numbers, you can spell it out, or you can write this all real number symbol. Okay. Now the range. And most of the time you will graph, you will have a graph to go along with um, with these table. The range is describing what? All y values. Will I eventually have all negative y values? Yeah, because of what? What makes it all negative y values? The arrow. That's why the arrow is really important. Will I eventually have all positive y value? So guess what the range is? All real numbers. Okay. So that's going to be all real numbers as well. Do we right away know the y-intercept? Yes. yes. Okay. Because of the point we use, x is already 0, so the y-intercept is the same. Now, I have to do a little bit of work, right, to find the, the what? X-intercept. X-intercept is when y equals what? Zero. So zero equals negative one half x plus six. What's your next move to move solve for minus six? Uh huh. So now you have negative six equals negative one half x. What's your next move? You can totally divide both sides by what? Negative half or multiply both sides by a negative what? Two over. 1 or just 2 is fine too, okay? Because if you multiply both sides by its reciprocal, what's happening to this negative 2 and that negative 2? Is it gone? Yeah, okay, so that's why multiplying by the reciprocal when you see fractions. How about negative 2 over 1 times negative 6? Yep, 12, positive 12. So, x-intercept, I want you to write as a point for this one because all of it looks like it's point system. x-intercept is what? comma what? Thank you, Sophia. 12 comma 0. You guys are doing great. Okay, now, increasing interval or decreasing interval? Increasing is when I'm going to the right. What must happen? What must be true with my y values? It's going up. Look at the graph on your paper, on your notes. As I'm going to the right, is the y value going up? No. So it's not increasing. It's none or non-applicable. Now, as we're going to the right, as your pencil is moving to the right, to the right on the graph, is the y value going down? So is that decreasing? Yes. Yes. Would you go, so that's decreasing infinitely. So how do we write that? Interval means you start with the open parentheses. Okay. You're going to start with the negative infinity all the way to pause, pause infinity. Okay. So I mean, it's always decreasing. It's decreasing from the number on the negative side that you can't pinpoint, and it's going to keep on going, okay? So that's the increasing gen interval. Let's do two. Point use. What point did we use? Negative 7, comma? 5. five. Rate of change? 2 over 3. All right, now, bless you. Let's look back at the graph. Domain and range, tell me. All real numbers, because if you look at that line, they have arrows. Eventually, you're going to have all negative values and all? All what? Positive. positive values. Okay, all real numbers for both. We need to find what now? X intercept, Y intercept. So let's do it. X intercept is when Y equals to? Zero. Okay, so I'm going to plug in zero minus five equals two over three times X plus seven. 0 minus 5 is just negative 5, right class? Okay, equals 2 over 3 times x plus 7. 
there are multiple ways to solve for x. What would be the easiest for you? What would be the easiest for you? You can get rid of fractions. You can distribute. Which one would you like to go first? Distribute. Okay. Distribute. Let's do it. So that means I'm going to have negative 5 equals 2 third x. Okay. Times that, right? What's 2 third times 7? 14 over. Very good. Some of you would love to get rid of fractions by now. Let's do it. If I want to get rid of fractions, I need to multiply each and every term by what? Three. So I'm, instead of negative 5, what would you have now? Negative 15 equals how many x now? 2x plus how much? Isn't that so much prettier? All right. Now we're going to do what? Subtract 14. It's a big number. What's that big number? Negative 20. 9 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2. Leave it as fraction. Okay, none of this should be a calculator format. So x is what? Okay, so I will accept two ways. Negative 29 over 2 or negative 14 and a half. Okay. Now with the x-intercept and y-intercept, we're going to use points here. So it's going to be negative 14 and a half comma what, y'all? 0. And we're going to do the same thing for, guess what? Y-intercept. That means x has to be what? Uh -huh. Which is a little bit easier, right? x is 0. So y minus 5. Oh, man. My computer is taking a nap, which we can all use one. All right, so y equals 2 third times 0 plus 7. Well, 0 plus 7 just what? 7, which is awesome. Okay, so this is just going to leave me 2 third times 7, right, class? What's well, 2 third times 7? Okay, it's again 14 over 3. You can solve this multiple ways. What do you want to do next? Add 5 to both sides, okay. If I add 5 to both sides, though, do I need to find a common denominator? Yes. All right, so 5 becomes something with a 3 in the bottom. So what's the top? 15. That will leave me a y equals? Whoa, that's 29 over 3. Or 7, 7 times 3 is what, 21? 8 times 3 is what? 9 times 3 is 27? So 9? Nine and some change? Nine and two thirds. Yes, no? Okay. So put it in here. How would you write it as an order pair in the wine set box? Zero, comma, nine and two thirds. Okay. Now, for increase and decrease, it's going to be more helpful if you have a graph. Look back at your graph. As your, as your pencil is going to the right, What's happening to the y value? So decreasing, what should we write on that box right away? N A. Okay. So what should we write on the increasing box? Pa from, we always start with a smaller number. From negative, negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Okay. So it's increasing from some very small value, which we don't know. Uh huh. Oh, is that a connection for lines? If your slope is positive, does that mean you can have an increasing interval? So far, let's compare the two. Would you agree? Well, over here, my slope is negative. I have a decreasing interval. Ooh. And then over here, I have a slope that's positive. I have an increasing interval. Hmm, Mark, you might have something there. Okay. Let's check out 3 to see if it correlates with that. So, 3, point U's. Did we use any points here previously? You're just plugging the zero there. Earlier, we already have points, didn't we? What were the point U's? We found it earlier already, a lot of the stuff. Didn't we find the x and y intercept earlier? Or weren't those points? Okay, so tell me, what were those points? 
We, I used two points to be exact. So look back in. Nix of six comma what? Zero and? Zero comma? Eight, okay? From the previous example. Can I go straight down to x and a step and write those out? Because guess what? They are exactly the same. x and a step is when y is zero. So which one should I write on x and a step? Negative six comma zero, and this one's zero comma eight. Look at that. Four, three boxes done. All right, now let's do the domain and range. We're gonna do things that's easier first. What are the domain and range? All real numbers. All real numbers for both. Okay. Now I want to take Mark's theory to see if the slope is positive then I might have an increasing. If the slope is negative, then I might have a decreasing. So how do I find the slope here for number three? So raise your hand. Uh huh. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, that means I'm solving for y. Okay, so let's solve for y. That means negative three y equals equals what? Negative 4x because I'm going to move negative 4x to both sides. Is that okay so far to do? Okay, so negative 4x minus 24. What's the next step in solving for y? Divide each and every term by negative 3. So I now have y equals, y equals what? 4 with 3. x plus or minus here? Plus. Plus what? Eight. Whoa, guys, that number and that thing matches. What's your slope? Four over three. Now let's go back to the graph and look. Did Mark have the correct theory? Yes. So right away, can I write Na for decreasing? What would you write for the increasing interval? Negative infinity to pause infinity. And this is where we are going to stop for today. <laughs> I will upload this on YouTube.